This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone and today is Friday and that means it's time for the 570th MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today we're going to look at the Top 10 Chandra Planeswalkers. Before we get into the video, let me tell you about today's special sponsor, Into the AM. They're a great company I've worked with a lot over the last couple of years. They sell apparel, including the graphic tee that I'm wearing right now. This one is called Nature's Flow, and it features a stylized and beautiful natural landscape featuring a waterfall and trees. In addition to having a lot of awesome designs like this one, their shirts are also a great fit. I'm six foot three and 260 pounds, and this usually means I need to buy big and tall clothing, but this double XL fits me great. They have a wide range of sizes too, from small to four XL. Right now they're running a promotion where you can get three graphic tees for $60 or six for $112. And if you use my special link, you get an extra 10% off. You can see the link on your screen now, and you can also find it in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. Chandra is one of the main characters in Magic's lore, and she was introduced way back in 2007's Lorwyn. That set also introduced Planeswalker as a card type, making her one of the original five Planeswalkers and the first red Planeswalker ever. She has more Planeswalker cards than anyone else. They already revealed Chandra Hope's Beacon for the upcoming March of the Machines, which will be her 15th Planeswalker card. And enough Chandras have been successful at Magic's highest level of competition that I can do a top 10. Right now, that isn't the case for any other Planeswalker. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Grand Prix. Alright, let's dive into the list. At number 10, it is Chandra Nalar. This is a good place to start because this is the original Chandra Planeswalker. This Chandra is a 5 mana Planeswalker that starts with 6 loyalty, she is very quintessentially red and is all about doing damage to things. She has a plus one that lets you ping a player, a minus X that lets you do X to a creature, and a minus eight that allows you to do 10 damage to your opponent and each creature they control. If you have a well-developed board, it definitely isn't that hard to get to her ultimate since she starts with such high loyalty. However, she isn't an amazing planeswalker when it comes to protecting herself all on her own. Still, she can pressure the opponent's life and damage creatures in play, things many Chandra planeswalkers would go on to do a lot of. She didn't see a ton of play in Standard, especially when you consider the fact that she was printed several times in Standard legal sets, but she did find some success in red control decks in the format. At number 9, it is Chandra, the Firebrand, who was printed in both Magic 2012 and Magic 2013. This 4-mana Chandra starts with 4 loyalty. She has a plus 1 that does 1 damage to a creature or player, a minus 2 that lets you copy your next instant or sorcery, and a minus 6 that does 6 damage to up to 6 targets. This Chandra can go after creatures with her plus one, which is pretty nice, and her ability to copy spells can give you some nice card advantage. As we'll continue to see, many Chandras like instants and sorceries. Her ultimate isn't the easiest to get to, but it is powerful. She saw some play in standard red deck wins and red green aggro, but she doesn't have any points since rotating. And number eight, it is Chandra Fire Artisan from War of the Spark. She costs four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. She has a plus one that lets you exile the top card of your library, and you can play that card until the end of your turn. This sort of red impulsive draw effect is something many Chandras get to do these days. She also has a minus seven that exiles the top seven cards of your library and lets you play all of them that turn. While it is a bit of a bummer you do have to pay for all of them, that can still definitely give you a ton of value. Perhaps the best thing about Chandra, though, is her other ability. She damages your opponent or a Planeswalker for every loyalty counter that gets removed from her. This makes it pretty hard for Chandra not to do some damage to your opponent, since if they want to attack her or damage her in any way, they are going to get hurt. This also works great with her ultimate, so in addition to the effect you get, Chandra will also do 7 damage to your opponent. Like a lot of Chandra, she saw play in red aggro decks in Standard. She was a great source of card advantage against control decks. She hasn't seen play, though, since rotating out of Standard. At number 7, it is Chandra Acolyte of Flame from Core Set 2020. One of the reasons Chandra has the most Planeswalkers is Core Set 2020, a set which featured an uncommon rare and mythic rare Chandra. 
Obviously, this is the rare one. She's a three mana planeswalker that starts with four loyalty and she has two zero abilities. The first puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker you control, a nice ability if you happen to be running all the Chandras on this list or other red planeswalkers. Her other zero ability makes two 1-1 one -one elementals with haste that get sacrificed at the end of your turn, and her minus two lets you cast a cheap instant or sorcery from your graveyard. This is another Chandra planeswalker who was great in standard aggro decks. Her second zero ability could help you go wide and damage your opponent, and her minus two could rebuy important burn spells. She also has a single point from a pioneer mono red aggro deck, but she doesn't have any points in any format since 2020. At number 6, it is Chandra Fire of Kaladesh from Magic Origins. This Chandra is a bit different from the others because, as you can see, she actually starts as a creature. Magic Origins featured a cycle of creatures that transformed into Planeswalkers, which was a really cool way of representing the moment when these characters became Planeswalkers. While she's a creature, Chandra is a 3-mana 2-2 that can tap to do 1 damage to the opponent, and if Chandra has done 3 or more damage to your opponent in a single turn, she transforms. Anytime you play a red spell, she untaps, so it is very doable for her to do that much damage, especially in a deck that has lots of cheap red spells. Once transformed, she becomes Chandra Roaring Flame, who, like the creature side, is all about doing damage. She's a 4 loyalty planeswalker who has a plus 1 that does 2 to a player, a minus 2 that does 2 to a creature, and a minus 7 that does 6 damage to every opponent, and gives all opponents an emblem that does 3 damage to them on their upkeep. She has found success in both standard and pioneer red deck wins, but she's our third consecutive Chandra that hasn't gained any points since 2020. At number 5, it is Chandra Dressed to Kill from Crimson Vow, making her the newest Chandra to make the list. She's a 3 mana, 3 loyalty planeswalker with 2 plus 1s. Her first gives you 1 red mana and does 1 damage to a player or planeswalker, and her other plus 1 lets you exile the top card of your library, and if it's red, you can cast it. And her minus 7 exiles the top 5 cards of your library, and you can cast any red spells from among them. You also get an emblem that lets you do X damage to any target whenever you cast a red spell, where X is the mana spent to cast that spell. So, obviously this Chandra is very into red cards, so unsurprisingly, this is another Chandra that fits really well into mono red aggro decks, which she has been played in in standard pioneer and modern. She's likely to gain more points in all of those formats and could move up this list in the future. At number 4, it is Chandra, Awakened Inferno. This is the mythic rare Chandra from Corset 2020. She costs 6, starts with 6 loyalty, and she can't be countered. Her plus 2 gives each opponent an emblem that pings them every upkeep. Her minus 3 does 3 damage to all non-elementals, and her minus X does X damage to a creature or planeswalker, and exiles it when it dies. Unlike the last several Chandras we've looked at, this one is not very well suited to aggro decks because she costs 6. She still damages your opponent and their creatures a whole lot, but she's at her best in control decks thanks to her ability to sweep the board and kill things, and her emblems are a very real win condition. She was played in standard control decks and continues to see play in Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy. She has a very real chance to move higher up on this list. At number 3, it is Chandra Pyromaster, who was printed in both Magic 2014 and 2015. She is a 4-mana, four 4 loyalty planeswalker. She has a 0 loyalty ability that does the impulsive draw thing, which means she can be a source of card advantage, and a plus 1 that lets you kill small things, damage your opponent, and make a creature unable to block. And she has a great ultimate that will win you the game more often than not. However, the ability that gets used the most is definitely the zero loyalty one. As a source of card advantage, Chandra has been pretty widely played on both of her trips through Standard, including in the decks you'd expect, like various red aggro builds, but she was even played in decks like Devotion to Green, which is interesting because she didn't help your devotion at all. She was just a great source of card advantage. She's also been played in modern Jun decks and has a single point from a mono red prison deck in Legacy, but she doesn't have any points since 2018, and the Awakened Inferno is likely to pass her in the future. And number two, it is Chandra Flamecaller from Oath of the Gatewatch. She's another Chandra that is more well suited to control decks. Her plus one makes two, three, one haste tokens that get sacrificed at the end of her turn. Her zero ability lets you discard your hand and draw that many cards plus one. And her minus X is a sweeper that does X damage to every creature. So far, this Chandra has not seen play since rotating out of Standard, where she was played in various Control and Energy decks, and Chandra Awakened Inferno has a great shot at eventually sitting at the number 2 spot on this list. However, the number 1 Chandra on this list will probably be there forever, and that is, of course, 
Chandra, Torch of Defiance, from Kaladesh. She is simply one of the best planeswalkers in all of Magic's history. In fact, she came in at number two on my most recent look at planeswalkers in this series. She has four loyalty abilities instead of the usual three, and they're all great. Her first plus one gives you card advantage and can supply a source of damage. Her second plus one ramps you. Her minus three can remove most creatures, and her ultimate is game-breaking. She was a staple in red decks and standard, allowing her to accumulate a ridiculous 154 points in that format alone, but she's gone on to see heavy play in Magic's other formats too, finding significant success in Pioneer, Historic, Modern, Legacy, and Vintage, and she shows up in all sorts of decks in those formats, ranging from Burn to Control. This is a pretty good indicator that she won't stop putting up points anytime soon, and she already has a massive lead over all of her fellow Chandras, so it's hard to imagine that she is ever removed from her spot atop this list. So those are the 10 Chandras that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you want to own any of these cards, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past videos, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.